Welcome to Maker.io and today we're going to be learning about how to set up your Adafruit dashboard. Adafruit.io is a simple to use internet service that easily enables IoT to get and post data. For example, an ESP8266 could be made to take temperature readings and then store its data on the Adafruit service while requiring very little overhead. But the system is not just limited to storing and returning data to IoT devices. It can also be used to make GUI interfaces for viewing data, controlling devices and triggers that can be used for warnings. So the first task is to sign up for the service and you have two options. A limited version, which we will be using, and a $10 subscription service, which enables higher traffic. Unfortunately, because I've already made my account, I can't show you the steps to actually making an account, but it is rather trivial. So just follow the article that's attached with this video to see how to do that. With your account created, it is time to visit io.adafruit and if you are logged in, then you should be taken to your dashboard. While we will not be getting devices to talk to Adafruit in this article, we will instead look at the different features included in Adafruit IO and what they do. So the first two things that you will need to find out are your username and your private key. The username is used to identify your account and the key is used as the password. To find out what your username and key are, simply click the View AIO Key option on the navigation found on the left. A window should pop up that contains both your username and key. In this case, my username is whatever I set it to when I registered, and my active key is here. Now, you've seen this key, which means you could actually log into my account and upload data. So I am going to click Regenerate AIO Key, so you can't do that. So now we know what our username and key are, it's time to look at the next option, which is feeds. Feeds on Adafruit IO are used to store data from IoT devices, but IoT devices can also read data from feeds. This means that we need to set up a feed, otherwise our devices will have nothing to save to. So to do this, start by clicking the feed option in the navigation window on the left. Once the feed page loads, click actions and then create a new feed. And in this window that pops up, we will give our feed a name and a description. I plan to use this as a temperature logger, so for now I will call the feed name temperature and give a simple description. If all goes well, we should see our new feed appear on the feeds page. Dashboards are used to control devices and create user-friendly interfaces that can work with feeds. Interfaces that can be made include sliders, buttons, toggle switches, control buttons, gauges and logs. So. To start making a dashboard, we need to visit the dashboard page, which is done by clicking dashboard in the navigation menu on the left. In the dashboard page, click actions and create a new dashboard. And in the window that pops up, we need to give our dashboard a name and a description, just like we did with the feed. In this case, I will call the dashboard temperature station as it will be linked to our temperature feed and the description will be somewhat self-explanatory. If all goes to plan, your dashboard should now appear in the dashboard list. To open and edit this dashboard, click its name in the list. With the dashboard open, we should have an empty blank space as we can see here. So we're going to need to fill this dashboard with some GUI stuff. While the dashboard allows for many different types of IO interfaces, we will only be adding the gauge today. So to add a gauge, we're going to click the blue create a new block button and then we're going to select the gauge. Now we have to link the gauge to a feed. So in this case, we're going to link it to the temperature feed. So we do that by ticking this box and clicking next step. The next step involves filling out some details. We have some minimum values, some maximum values, a title, a thick or thin gauge. We'll keep it for thin because that's a bit more professional. And then a value as a label. Now we're going to leave everything as it is, but we're going to change the gauge label to degrees C, since our future device will upload degrees. We could also add other elements, including sliders and momentary buttons. But for now, I'm actually going to add a quick stream so I can demonstrate how on the dashboard you can drag different blocks and arrange them. So in this case, I'm just going to link it to temperature. I don't really care about all these different things. I'm just going to go ahead and create a block. And you'll see that we've got a block down here. But if we go to this little green button, this will allow us to edit the, the whole dashboard. So I can drag this block, which is a text stream, and I can move it around. I can change its size which means I can fully customize this GUI. I wonder what, oh wow, look at that. You can even change, oh, that's very nice. 
You can even change the uh, size of the dial as well. So I'm going to go ahead and make these streams big and I'm going to make this gauge nice and large. And then I'll click done editing. So now we're going to test if this GUI works. So we're going to go back to the main page. We're going to click feeds. We're going to click temperature and we're going to add a point. So we can go to actions and we can add some data. So I'm going to say 25 degrees and that gives us one point. So we go back to home, back to the dashboard, temperature station, and we've got 25 degrees centigrade. And we've also got a feed in our stream. So with the dashboard working, we will now look at the last feature, which is triggers. The trigger is an invaluable tool which can be used to create alerts under certain situations. For example, we could link our temperature to a trigger which can warn us if the room is too hot or cold. So to set up a trigger, we need to first click triggers in the navigation window on the left. Now that we are at the triggers page, we need to create a new trigger. So to do this, click actions and create a new trigger. At this point, we have the opportunity to either create a reactive trigger or a scheduled trigger. The reactive trigger is one that fires when a value does something in particular, while the scheduled trigger is one that fires constantly with a given time interval. The next window asks about how the trigger should behave and in this case, I have made the trigger send me an email saying it's too hot when the temperature feed is greater than 30. So we start by selecting the feed, which is the temperature, and then we're going to look for a comparison, in this case, greater than. And we're going to make sure that we've selected comparison value of feed. So the comparison value is going to be, let's say, 30 degrees. Then the action will be to email me. And the email will say, it's too hot. So we go and click create. And we now have a trigger. Other actions that you can do with the trigger include emailing, webhook messages, and publish a message to another feed. With the trigger created, we can now see it in our main trigger page. Adafruit have clearly worked very hard to create an IoT dashboard that not only provides a simple method for sending and receiving data, but for auto displaying that data. It therefore comes as no surprise that I will be using this in many projects to come. So thank you for watching and see you next time.